It's Mr. Rise FC himself, Saba Fadai, who uh, came up short in his main event fight against Dewan Owens. But what an event that was, Rise FC 3, that took place this past Saturday in Chilliwack. Saba, first off, before we get to anything at all, how are you, man? What a week that was uh, leading up to the fight. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. Um, it was a crazy, crazy, crazy event. Um, it was a crazy week building up um, to Saturday. Uh, so much went into it. Um, yeah, I fell short on the decision part, but man, the reviews that we have been getting um, in regards to the event itself, the, the level of production that we, we put out there, um, it's just been overwhelming. Uh, the love and support from the community, from the fighters, the coaches, the fans, um, it's just surreal. Before we talk about the event itself, we got to talk about your fight because, uh, you know, we were sitting in the commentating booth. I think you, if you talk to a lot of people, I'd be curious to hear who has reached out to you. But a lot of people felt you won that fight. And here's the thing, too. I think we a lot of people were surprised to see you in the cage uh, look as good as you did because, you know, we hear about a cage rust and it it certainly didn't look like it in there. How did you feel and, and were you very surprised about the decision? Um, I was extremely surprised with the 30-27. I knew it was a close fight. Um I felt like I had rounds one and three, um, but and everybody who I've talked to so far, I mean, the, I can't even name how many people have reached out to me and told me that I've won that fight. Um, rounds one and three were mine. Round three, 100% was mine. I dominated the striking. I hit him with a few shots. I dropped him. I took him down. I stayed on top. And I lost the round, according to this stupid judge. So I don't understand it. At the end of the day, it is my fault for leaving it into the hands of incompetent judges like that guy. I'm not calling the other two judges incompetent. Um, I mean, one judge gave it 29-28 to me, so I took two rounds. Um, one judge gave it 29-28 to him. I at least got a, a round out of that one. And a 30-27 to him is just... He was out to lunch with it. So I don't understand that uh, decision. The Athletic Commission is reviewing the fights, reviewing some of the decisions that were made uh, that night. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um, how did you feel in there, though? How, like, like just, just personally, because like I said, it didn't look like you had any cage rest. You seem like ready to go. And, you know, everything considered, you know, running the show, everything else, you look great in there. Yeah, you know, I, I felt... I felt slow. I felt slow. Now, that's not because I think it was ring rust. I, I don't believe in ring rust. Um, I think it was because the night before the event, I was at the venue until midnight, until closing. Um, I got home around 1 o'clock. I went to sleep around 2. Um, I was at the venue the next day on fight day at 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning. And I was putting the canvas together. I was... You know, putting chairs and tables and making sure everything is going according to, to my liking um, until around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then I went home and I got an hour of nap, which I, I didn't give my legs the rest that it required of me. Um, you know, looking back at all my other fight camps, fight week, I'm chilling. I'm going into the gym, breaking a light sweat, then I'm coming home and I'm resting. Um, the Saba that you guys saw inside the cage wasn't as springy, wasn't as um, agile as I normally am. Um, I, I wasn't listening to my coaches. That part, I, I believe, you know, being away from the cage for so long, for about three years, being able to tune in to your coaches' voices, um, I wasn't able to do that. Um, I, I only heard very vague voices and uh, I was hearing Darwin Douglas's voice more than anybody's and, and he wasn't even in the corner. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I felt stuck in there. I felt slow. I, but that was because of my crazy, my, my lunatic mind that thought, no, I need to be out there. I need to do all the event planning still and not resting. Um, I should have been resting. 
Okay. Well, all things considered, uh, you know, great performance. Um, have you talked to Dewan after the fight? Because one of the things I thought was cool after the fight, he talked about the professionalism of the organization and how well the show ran. Um, I thought that was really cool of him to say that just with everything that went into the fight. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't see why anybody would have any bad things to say about it. Um, his flight his flight itself was, was a bit of a shit show, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I never, never planned it out like that. Um, they unfortunately the the flight was late, so ended up having to miss their second flight. Uh, madness. Um, but aside from that, I mean, we treated all of our fighters with with respect. We brought them in uh, a day before the weigh-ins for them to relax, to settle in, um, get the food that they require uh, for rehydration. We gave them uh, Pedialyte's and, and coconut water for them to rehydrate. We took care of our athletes, and, and that comes from me being an athlete myself and, and knowing what we require as athletes to compete the next day or, or make weight the next day. Let's talk. Um, no, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Duan, Duan is a class act. Him and I had a long chat, an hour, hour and a half after, after the fight was done. I was upstairs cutting checks, and, and he was sitting beside me the whole time, and we are having a, the longest conversation, total class act. I got nothing but great things to say about the guy. He is a cool dude. And I actually reached out to him and I said, hey, why don't we do a rematch in your backyard? Um, so he's going to reach out to, to CES or a couple of other promotions out there and, and see if they can fly me out there and, and I can try to take revenge in his hometown. Okay. Uh, if you need a CES hookup, I'm your guy. I know I know them quite right. well. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk after this uh, interview. But um, uh, a couple things I wanted to highlight on the card. Obviously, Chad and Helger, uh, double champ. Great performance here. You know, moving back up to bantamweight, getting the finish on Craig McLean. Just your thoughts on him and his future at Rise FCs. He made history in his second you know, second appearance with the promotion. He did, man. He did. He, he made history. Um, Craig is, is a teammate of mine. And uh, I have a lot of respect for Craig. Um, but man, Chad and Helliger put it on him. You know, he he, he came, he showed up, and uh, I'll tell you what though, Craig McLean was not the Craig McLean that I know inside that cage. But everybody has their off days. Um, on Saturday, he wasn't on his on his A game. Chad capitalized on it. He became double champ, and uh, for a very good reason. He he, you know, he had a game plan. He stuck to it, and he got the job done. He's the flyweight and the bantamweight champion. He's on a seven-fight win streak now. Is that right? I or, believe so. Or, yeah, I'll just uh, check it up right here. But that sounds that sounds correct to me. He is on an absolute tear. This guy. Um, we have we have crazy fights lined up for him. Um, it all depends what he wants to do, man. He's our champion, so he's our double champion. So he kind of has a say as to what he wants to do now. So we'll, we'll be in talks with, with Chad and see what he wants to do, and we'll take it from there. Speaking of bantamweights, Jamie Siraj, uh, really impressive win over Gabe, Gabe Sagman. I know he wasn't 100% satisfied with the win, but he, but he got it done, and he did so in his uh, backyard of Chilliwack. Just your thoughts on his performance. Yeah, Jamie's a killer, man. I, I Again, it was not a mismatch. Um, Gabe came... And, and took it to him. Jamie Siraj is an absolute freaking animal. Um, he was he was on his A game. Yeah, he didn't get the finish. I know he always seeks the finish, and that's what I love about Jamie. Um, he's a he's an absolute monster. The, the, there's a huge there's a bright future for, for Jamie, and I can't wait to see uh, what we can do for him. And uh, hopefully, he gets a shot to the UFC. To be honest with you. I, I, I've known Jamie ever since he was 15, 16 years old. So I'd like to see him, you know, fulfill his dreams and and go into the UFC and and do some damage over there. But if that's not the case, um, we'll have fights for him lined up. No problem. Uh, a couple other fights I want to talk about. George Alcala and Josh uh, Kiyakowski, Kiyakowski, I should say. What a fight that was. Um, you know, it was really close. I thought that could have gone either way. But uh, Alcala, the Extreme Couture product, getting it done. Um, just, you know, what are the future of both of these guys? Because George is another guy who, like I said, really praised the promotion. Um, you know, I know the show ran well, but it's still nice to hear fighters just, you know, mention that as something in, in their post-fight, which I thought was cool. Yeah. 
Absolutely, James. You know, if you treat these fighters with respect and dignity and and, and bring them in and show them some love, um, for one, they're not going to have anything bad to say about the promotion. Two, they're only going to say great things about the promotion. Three, they're going to go out there and give it their all. And and you look at the fight between Josh and, and, and George, that, that fight was in was a monster of a fight. And, and that's what I love about Josh, you know. The reason why I wanted him to fight was because he always brings it. He always brings it. He gives it his all inside that cage. And, and a, a kid like that, I have the most utmost respect for. And, and, and George, you know, he he had a game plan again, and, and he capitalized on it. He A lot of takedowns, I, I feel like, the judges give takedowns way too much credit. If if the if the takedown has been done, if the guy is down on the ground, do something with it. If you do something with it, then yes, um, then the takedown should count. But if you if you take the guy down and you don't do anything with it, then if the guy gets back up, I think that should be worth points. Yeah. The guy takedown defense or getting back up that, that should be worth something. The guy didn't do anything. And, and he was able to get up. So that being said, I think that was a phenomenal fight. Um, so, yeah. Okay, that's good. Right, uh, just both of those guys. There's, there's a lot of new signings with Rise FC. I know they announced some of it in the cage there. Um, and But the big thing I wanted to talk about is this card in July that's coming up uh, in Victoria. What can you tell us about that? Uh, really exciting, bringing MMA to uh, Vancouver Island. Um, yeah, first and foremost, big shout out to... Chris Franco, kickboxing penetration right there. I'm wearing their shirt, actually. Um, but the newest signees are, are are now part of Team Rise. Um, uh, Kyle Machado and Jaden Martin, those guys are going to be uh, stars. And uh, we look forward to working with, with Team Franco. Um, July 27th, I hope to have both of those guys on the card. Um Victoria hasn't had a fight card since I think I believe 2011 or 2013, and you know when we kind of reached out to them, they were all gung ho about it. They they, you know, they were so excited, and it's getting very easy. It's it's easy working with these guys, and um, ma- making it happen. Um, next week I will go down to Victoria and. and Look at the venue and pan out what we're what we're gonna do. Uh, look at some radio stations and whatnot. See what we can do with with uh, with Victoria. A, a fight that I really wanted to talk about was uh, Justin Dogie and Terence. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, um, I gotta say, I got a ton of respect for Team Toshido and and. You know, everybody had Justin Dogie winning that fight. I had messages, phone calls, hate messages from from coaches, from promoters, from matchmakers, um, saying that that was a really bad matchup, um, that Terrence was going to get hurt, that I'm feeding Terrence to the Wolves that um, I should be ashamed of myself, quote-unquote, that I should be ashamed of myself wow. making that fight happen. And, um, you know, me and their, me and Terrence's camp kind of had uh, n- bad feelings, I guess. It's all crushed now. We're good. But everybody slept on Terrence. Everybody slept on Terrence. And I want to say that I was the only guy – that actually had some faith in Terrence. And that guy hit so freaking hard. When he touches you, you go to sleep. That's not taking anything away from Justin Dogi and Team Toshido. All I'm saying is that I don't make mismatches. I'm not here in the business of making mismatches and building guys with padding up their records, with giving them shitty opponents. I'm not in that business because that doesn't that doesn't benefit my organization that doesn't benefit the fighter who wins and that doesn't benefit the fighter who loses it doesn't benefit anybody and and on top of that 
fans will realize how shitty of a matchup that was. They understand mismatches, and they don't want to see it. They want to see a real competitive fight, like between Josh and George. They want to see that kind of fight. They want to see a fight between me and and, and Duan. I could have easily found myself a bum fight Mm -hmm. for my return. I'm the president. I could have done that to myself if I wanted to. But I didn't. I got myself a tough-ass opponent, and he beat me. Well, he didn't beat me, but (laughs) beat me. You know what I mean? He had 15 more fights than you too, which was, I mean, you look at the experience and the guys he's fought, it was something we talked about pre-fight. I mean, that, like you said, coming off the three-year layoff, coming in and fighting him, that was a tough out. Yeah, it, it was. And I didn't want, I didn't want uh, a layup fight. I didn't mm-hmm. want a tune-up fight. And, and guys messaged me on, on Facebook asking for tune-up fights and I just don't respond to them. And I will never respond to something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Rise Fighting Championship is not about padding up your records. If you feel like you want to pad up your records? Don't call me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna find you an opponent. It's just simple and plain. We make real fights happen. Look, Jamie Siraj is my boy. Craig McLean is my boy. Josh Kukowski, he's my boy. I didn't find these guys bum fights. Mm-hmm. If I was gonna find anybody bum fights, was was gonna be for myself and my homies. But I don't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it just. Um, I, I want everybody to realize that that we're we're in to make real fights happen. We don't do tune up fights ever. That's that's a good mandate to have, and I think that you will see the success of the promotion uh, and fighters gravitating towards uh, the promotion when you when you have mandates like that. I think that's great. Um, before we get out of here, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, Darcy McBride, uh, I, I learned so much from him over the weekend just in the commentary booth, but just hit, what he did with his show um, was amazing. You saw the respect level by the people that worked there. Just talk a little bit about his impact on this card and uh, any other things you want to mention from the card that we didn't touch on. Darcy McBride, man, I... I mean, I, I, like I told you, I have a long list of thank yous to do after this. Um, and at the very, very top of the list, even above my wife, is Darcy McBride. Um, Darcy put his heart and soul into this fight camp, I mean, into this fight promotion. Um, he's doing it out of the love of the sport. And... There's n- not enough words I can really put together to to thank him. Um, I, I I truly don't have a way of thanking him other way other than saying thank you. You know, um, he went over and beyond, and um, I mean he, he is also learning how to be a matchmaker and, and, and you know doing all the promotion you know, media and all this stuff, man, the the list that he's got to deal with is humongous. And the fact that he was able to get through it all was, I, I am truly blessed to have Darcy McBride on my side. That's, that's the only way I can, I can describe it. You've got a lot of thank yous to get to. I'll, I'll get those to you now. And if there's anything else you wanted to, to take away from this card as we look ahead to Rise FC 4, um, yeah, just great card overall. If you haven't seen it, you can watch the replay on Fight TV. But, Saba, I'm going to give you the floor. If there's anything you want to get off, the floor is yours, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, thank you also for, for giving us the platform to, to you know, bring awareness to our company and um, bring – a lot of these local athletes, all the fighters on your show, and, and, and giving them uh, the level of respect that they deserve because they put a lot of hard work in, into fight camp, and all they want to do is, you know, tell their story. And I appreciate you for, for allowing them to be using your platform to do that. Um, so I got Darcy out of the way. Uh, my wife, she's been an absolute gem, you know, supportive. Uh, again, I can't say enough about my wife. Um, my parents, they killed it at the show, serving food and, and, and doing every little thing that I asked them to do. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors, James and Chris over at Flash Crypto, Flashcoin, um, Graham and Pete over at Mount View Harley Davidson. Todd and Eric over at uh, Sovereign Extract, Jeremy over at Clark AV, Darwin, Michael, Jeremy 
over at Indigenous Bloom and Brent over at Optimum Sports Therapy. All of our other uh, uh, gold package sponsors are Jordy Blakeway, Ink Boy Tattoo, uh, Ernie Victor and Naylene over at Sham Enterprises, Tim Nemeth over at TDN Constructors, uh, Jordan McKay, Southgate Vacuums, uh, Ryan Mailman over at uh, Scarecrow Tattoo, Steve Doan, Cornell at Timbrel Constructors, Wes over at Fraser Valley Roofing, Bill Miller and the Bill Miller family, I love you guys, Paul Sahora over at Cedar View Farms, Jonas at Siwash Sports, Ken Armstrong over at Can Arms Constructors, um, all of our employees, uh, bartenders and waitresses, my cousin Lindsay, and a uh, long time part of the, the promotion summer. Uh, they put in tremendous of work making that whole entire uh, the bar scene happen. Um, Jamie Hamilton was the acting promoter of the night. Thank you to him. Um, Darwin and Francine Douglas, again, they, they were a big part of the show. They made a lot of the little things that I couldn't take care of while I was upstairs warming up. They took care of that. Don Andrews, the greatest voice in the history of announcing. Um, I love having him as a part of the, the, the team. Uh, Big Rich, Kaylin, the Ring Girls, um, all of our vendors, Luna Float and Oxygen Yoga, um, James Lynch, Darcy McBride, and, um, and Micah Brakefield as, as commentators. Um, all of our fighters and coaches, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you guys enough for being so professional and coming in there and, and scrapping with all your hearts. I love you guys. Um, without you guys, the show would not be where it is today. And last but definitely not least, the BC Athletic Commission, even though that one judge really, really, really pissed me off. Um, but the BC Athletic Commission, man, I love you guys. Um, Mike Patna, um, Danica, you guys are just so much fun to work with. And I cannot wait to, to work with you guys again for um, July 27th. And September 7th and October and November 30th. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much um, for being a part of this show. Um, yeah, man. That's all I got. <laughs>